All right, my people. That that was um, that was a little technical, uh, a little technical thing right there. But um, be that be that as it may, we were touching on the Asherim. So let's just continue the Asherim. The Asherim were what was known as the sacred groves, and we're we're, we're studying now on Jehoshaphat or Jah judgment on Jah judging. In other words, it's not we judging. You understand? It's not we. People say, oh, you are too judgmental. Um, it depends on, I mean, I think that word is misused because it's misunderstood exactly w what justice and judgment and all those things are. We use these things kind of because somebody else used it and we think we understood what it means and sometimes it doesn't really mean that and we contribute to our own confusion. So in order to kind of, in order to get out of, in order to get out of that, you understand, let us continue the study right here. So we're searching on human love. You understand that the Asherim, it typifies, um, it typifies human love with its animal propensities or its animal, animalistic properties. Not saying animal as bad, but just saying animal as a step down from man. You understand? From man creating in, created in the image and after the likeness, right? So we, we touched on how through, Jeho, through Jehoshaphat, <coughs> excuse me, allegiance to Yahweh or Jehovah, the inner forces mentioned as Judah, referred to as Judah or Yehuda, Yah's praises, Yah's praises are purified. Quote, he took away dot, 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 the Asherim out of Judah, according to Second Chronicles 17 and 6. Now, here's a key teaching. And the teaching at this point of our Jehoshaphat lesson is that fine discrimination, careful discrimination, fine discernment, discrimination, is required, fine discrimination or discernment is required in order to distinguish between human and divine love. That's a good exercise right there. Try to distinguish, if you can, between human and divine love, and that is human love based on its animal propensities and divine love based on Yahweh and his word and those who are able to exemplify that, you understand, or when we are able to exemplify that. Now, all love is divine in its origin. All love is divine in its origin, where it came from in its root. Before, Remember, some love has been manufactured, that man has taken this divine love and he has, he has made a product out of it, some sort of product, something out of it. He's made something out of it. You know what I mean? And we need to distinguish between human love Right and divine love, but recognizing that all love is divine in its origin, but in passing through the lens, the lens, the spectacles, and passing through these lenses or these spectacles of man, right, of his mind, the lenses of man's mind, of his mind, it is apparently broken into many colors, like the spectrum. It's, it's broken down into many colors, as it goes through the spectrum, that, that clear, that pure, what ones would call white light, going through the prism or the spectrum or the paraben is broken down now into different colors, into the seven bands. You understand? Or like the seven chakras. Yet, like the rays of white light, it remains pure. It still remains pure when it goes through the prism and it breaks down in the prism into those those um, seven colors, the seven orders, like the seven chakras, like the seven spirits, right? Man's province is to make its manifestations in his life just as pure as its origin. In other words, our providence, the providence that we have as, as man, as so-called human being, is to make the manifestations as it goes through that prism, you understand, um, in his life, in our lives, just as pure as the original or, or origination, as the origin. You understand? So if it's divine in this origin, it's our providence to make the manifestations now of this through our prism as pure as the, or, the origins and as the originator intended, right? This requires painstaking pains taking pains taking pains taking you know what I'm saying pains taking taking great pains 
to discriminate. You understand? Know to the, not racially discriminate, but we have to understand what's what. You understand? Know and good judgment. So it, this is key: discrimination and good judgment. So now, or, or discernment. Biblically speaking, it'll be called discernment. Discernment and good judgment. Discernment and good judgment. Good weighing and balancing, and not tipping the scales. You understand? In 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 in. Adelo or Madel and, and favoritism to this or to uh, or or to that. Don't walk to the left or the right, but walk straight. Not going to the left or the right. Keeping balance. That's basically the act of walking in the way, the truth, and the life with balance. So we need discernment and good judgment. You understand? And it's important for us to remind ourselves of this. So all of this is contained in Jehoshaphat. All this is contained in this name and more. So we come across this name in scripture, and it's in a prophetical area like 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 Timbete Eul, you understand, know or the prophecy of Joel. You understand, know we can understand it in its historical context, in its uh, metaphysical or mystical context. You understand, know in its mythological even context. Basically, all of that's necessary to understand is the biblical and the applicative how it applies now to our life and what we can do about it so we can see the fruits. You understand? I love when one hears this lesson, studies for themselves, puts into application, and sees the results. You understand? Once that happens to you, as they say, you're, you're so, so to speak, hooked. You know, once it happens that you, that you seek uh, to do the will of the Father, then you understand from where the teachings are. You understand? And how precious these teachings are both to teach them, to share them for others, but most of all to learn them ourselves and to put them in effect. You understand? To, to perfect them, to put them in effect. You understand? So we are warned. We are warned now at this point not to help or love the ungodly desires and propensities. We are warned not to, one, help them, you understand? Nor to love the ungodly desires the ungodly desires and propensity. This is not speaking about the, the men and people, you know what I'm saying? But you have to understand how closely these men and people in their deceived and deluded state are holding to these ungodly desires and propensities, you know what I'm saying? So in that sense, you know what I'm saying, we have a hate of the garment that's spotted by the flesh but might be able to save them with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Understand that key. You understand? So that's why it doesn't say with love. So some people, when they read those areas, it says, um, um, say them with fear. That, oh, not fear because, you know, the nonsense, because they, they haven't studied in sort of connection. And understand that it's one holistic or holy system. You understand? One holy system. So we're warned about this. Not to love or help the ungodly desires and propensities. You know, like, let me say, for example, there's things that we may all do. You understand, or wrestling not to do. You understand, and may do them, and they not, may not be those sins to death. You understand, um, minor or major. You understand, as it may be, when we recognize them in ourselves, and we still are in the so-called habit of doing them, by not helping it, by not loving it, but recognizing that this thing got to go. You understand, it helps us to overcome even those negative or enemies, you understand, in ourselves as we work out our salvation, being saved by grace, right? Now, under the Mosaic law, now when, when we look at Moses, Moshe's law, the Mosaic law of character cleansing, there's a Mosaic law, in fact, there's much in the Torah, uh, of character cleansing, of how we cleanse our character and become better characters resembling Christ in his kingly character, right? Under the Mosaic law of character cleansing, the most severe measures are recommended for accomplishing this result. Under the Mosaic law of character cleansing, it was the most severe measures that were recommended for accomplishing this result of character cleansing. You understand? Every enemy, every enemy was to be slaughtered. Every enemy was to be slaughtered, what? Without mercy. Hmm. 
Oh, every enemy was to be slaughtered. So spiritual now, digested spiritual, that means that spiritually we must slay these negative thoughts in the very same cut and dry way. You understand? Um, every enemy is to be slaughtered without mercy. And the most barbaric methods were adopted in exterminating those who oppose Israel. So this, this is nothing new. And so we tell those who, you know, oppose um, Israel. And we're speaking of I and I, Israel. And as Rastafari, Israel. Be careful. Be warned. You understand? Know be warned. You know what I'm saying? Accept Christ, accept Christ's terms of peace. This is a parable. This is a parable. Enemies, what are enemies? So if, if this is a parable, what we see in the scriptures, if this is a parable now, let's get off the physical and get to the metaphysical. If this is a parable, then what are these enemies who are to be slaughtered without mercy? You understand? No love, no help. Slay them. The enemies are false thoughts. The enemy are, are, are these false thoughts, thoughts that go contrary you understand, to the spirit of the truth of this B-I-B-L-E. You understand? The enemies are these false thoughts, you know, and people, even a lot of us sometimes use this kind of, I guess, okay, it's like, you know, like a, 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 a suppositional, you understand? It's like we couldn't stand uh, on two legs if, if we had three, you know what I mean? It's, it's something wrong right there. That's a false thought. So false thoughts. You, you have to learn to recognize. That's one of the first levels of discipleship, you understand, is learning recognition, to recognize yourself, recognize your thoughts, you understand, recognize your feelings and your emotions. Start to recognize it as you start to study and learn and grow in the Word, you understand, you have to now reflect on yourself and some things you'll be able to do. You'll be able to correct, change. Other things may be more difficult, and this is where it's important to learn how to pray. You understand? And to whom to pray? To pray to the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. You understand? To Jesus Christos Getachin. You understand? Through him, through his name, and through his authority, in conformity with the spirit of the word and the spirit of the righteousness and the truth in the word. So the false Thoughts are our primary enemies in discipleship, in the spiritual way. You understand? The false thoughts and the error ways, the error ways, ways that we have been doing things in error because uh, mama, papa, the whole generation been doing this error, and, and even they can admit, yes, yeah, it's an error, but this is how we do. This is, this is who we are. Like they, their identity has become, uh, um, their identity has become connected to this error, you understand? And you'll find this in a lot of cultures, so-called cults and cultures out there. Their whole identity is connected with that error because there's no truth according to, you understand, according to the B-I-B-L-E, according to the testimony of Yeshua HaMushi, according to the commandment, you understand, or the Decalogue, the Ten Words. There's, there's no reflection of that purity, you understand? They are to be utterly exterminated in thought and act or in word, which word and thought is two and the same thing, two of the same thing, in thought and in act, in word and in deed, exterminate, slay those false thoughts, Ex rid them, rid them out of this land that you have entered into if you are born again in, you understand, and through Getachin, Namit Hanitachin, Jesus Christos, through our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through Yeshua HaMoshi. If you are born again, and if you acknowledge that, yes, you are born again, then this is, the, this is one of the first things that one must come to recognize themselves, recognize your thoughts. See, a lot of people, they deny and they project. They deny and project, deny it or project it on somebody else. You understand, that does not help. It's like they say with an AA and a lot of these other kind of um, psychological, you know, some of them work on a certain level because the principles are still the same. One has to first, what, confess and others be saved. One has to recognize that they have a problem. If they don't recognize the problem, all the, all the best systems and, 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 and other people even to help them are not going to do anything for them because they have not recognized it where it counts within themselves, in their consciousness, in their heart, and in their mind. Now, the last portion of this Jehoshaphat lesson on good judgment 
is that the essential teaching of the lesson in Second Chronicles chapter 17 is that the establishment of judgment in the inner forces of the consciousness of the heart through the I am, through Jah, within and Jehoshua, within who is called Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior. You know what I'm saying? So the establishment of judgment in the inner forces of the consciousness through the I am overcomes all adverse ideas. This is the key to overcoming all adverse ideas in the organism, in the carbon structure. And in our melanated bodies, in this carbon structure, to overcome all of those adverse ideas, which by and by, if they're not reversed and, and cast out, they lead to sickness, they lead to illness, they lead to violence, they lead to hatred, they lead to all these acts that are done, you understand, through man's body and through his manifestation. You understand? Now, it also contributes greatly towards peaceful, salamawi peaceful and harmonious, or khibratawi, you know, uh, um, metababer, you know, harmonious expression, harmonious expression in both mind and body, in both the spiritual side of it and in body on the temporal side of it. Quote, mighty men of valor, end quote. A mighty man of valor, the hayalan, you know what I'm saying? That is, Dominant ideas of power, strength, and judgment are established in Jerusalem, in the Ieru or the Ayeru of Salem. Salem is an ancient archaic, you know, it's an Ethiopic word that means peace in duality. You understand? Not um, um, uh, Salamoch in that sense, but Salem means dual peace. As above, so below, because it's established in the heart chakra, and the heart chakra is between the upper three, the heavenly, and the lower three, the earthly. You understand? So that's Jerusalem, according to verses 13 to verse 18. The dominant center of consciousness is at the heart. The dominant center of consciousness is at the heart chakra, through the reign, through the rulership. You understand, of judgment, which is founded in principle, which is founded in principle based on the teaching and the testimony of the Jesus Christos. You understand, based on the teaching of his majesty and the testimony of the Jesus Christos. And what is his imperial majesty's testimony? To keep the Decalogue, to keep those ten words, to keep the commandment. You understand, to keep the commandment and that faith in, you understand, in love and obedience to our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. To get tachina, med chanetachin, Jesus Christos. So, good judgment has been the subject of this, um, of this, uh, of this lesson right here, this discipleship, Rastafari discipleship, because these are keys that one must have at the very start. You understand? One must gain these keys to understand both on the technical or the academic you know, how to look up words and find references and what are the key um, resources or books that is important for an individual disciple or a community, a Bible study community. Because if one's come together with other brothers and sisters in, or in their family, if they're willing, we don't advise going against the unwilling. This is not about make-believe. You understand? It's not about making somebody believe, you know, because that's a violation right there. You understand that's a violation of, of, of certain spiritual laws. And then there's also uh, uh, a liability that by trying to make somebody believe, if you're successful in making them believe and they have not willingly accepted this, you, then you have a liability. Biblically speaking, that's a curse. You understand? So biblically speaking, it's, it's a curse, but in the world we'll call that a liability. So that's to be a spiritual, in other words, liability. But we have to understand judgment. Because they say, leave all judgment to Jah. Well, of course. We do leave all judgment to Jah. You understand? We study what Jah's judgment is. You understand that we don't apply anything more, seek to apply anything more or less than the spirit and the truth of his judgment, which is revealed to us in the Metaf Kedus, or the Holy Bible. You understand? So we're not judging, you know, other people. 
You understand? People say you're judging other people. It's not us judging it. We, we see that these other people are living in this way that the Almighty has said, plus reality and scientifically and in other disciplines we can prove that this thing is harmful or no good. You understand? And there's no truth to it. You understand? So we are just speaking the judgment written. We are just carrying out the written judgment. And to close this right here, we want to just put this um, psalm, Psalm 149, a hallelujah psalm, as we're about to go into the, the 49th uh, sabbatical, you understand, or, or, or Shabbat, um, um, Rastafari Shabbat. We're about to get into that just now. It's the Friday and the evening is, is coming rapidly on. But Psalm 149 is a hallelujah psalm. Sing to Yahweh a new song. And his praise in the congregation of saints, of the Kedusan, the holy ones. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them or make them praise his name in the dance. Make them sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. For Yahweh, the sustainer, Egezi Abe Herlotu, Subhat, taketh pleasure in his people, Rastafari. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Make the saints, the Kedusan, the holy ones, be joyful in glory. Make them sing aloud upon their beds. Make the high praises, the the Elilta of Egezi Abi Herlotu Subhat, be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand, and a two edged sword in their hand, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. That's his B I B L E. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written, the judgment written. This honor, this honor, honor, you understand, riches and honor, this honor have all his saints, have all his do sign, all of his holy ones. Amen and amen. And just the... Uh, a sabbatical chant from the Met of Kedus of Nagus and Nagas, hopefully to close this this out right here. Um, um, 149, here we go. Besim Abu Awa, Lego Menafes Kedus, Ahadu, Amlak, Mesmora, Meto Arba Zetang. Hallelujah. Le egzi ab hera di sunak ene tek enulet. Miskana obek du sanu guba eno. Israel befet are you desibelo. Bet yon in the joch benegusacho. Hesetina yadurgu. Simuna bezafena yamesignu. Be kaborona be mesen koma yizem rulet. Egizi abe hera be hizbu te deseto alena. Yewahan inima be madanu de kef kefa yad bergalena. Begna. Egizi abe hera be hizbu te deseto alena. Yewahanan nimma be madanu kef kef yadar dalna. Kidusana be kubura yimekalu. Be minat afacho unlai hesetina yadar galu. Ye egzi abe hera miskana be gururu acho unna. Who let a fire low him save the ejachon? The Ahizab lie a beckelin. The Sochim mekaka lakitatina yadurguzen. Nilgu 
ሾቻቾ ወና በሰን ሰለጣም አለቆቻቾ ወንም በእገር ብረታ ያስሩ ዘንድ የተጻፈ ወን ፈርዳ ያደርጉባቾ ዘንድ ለቅዱሳና ሁሉ ይህቸክብርናት hallelujah give thanks and praise on brothers and sisters for listening ya love yehoshua be with you and all those who love his name and stay in the studies my brothers and sisters because the king of kings love you because you love yeshua our black lord and savior jesus christos and you love studying his word Shalom Rastafari